One of my greatest pleasure in, in life, obviously, is wine. What I love about wine is, is its sheer diversity. You don't have to be a professional to love wine. Some nights I feel like drinking a Barolo, and some nights I feel like drinking a Red Burgundy or a Rioja. Learning about wine is, you know, it's a long stage. The more you learn, the more you have to learn, because then you learn about that Pinot Grigio or that Chablis from that supplier or that winemaker. Then you can even go to the, you know, this wonderful world of wine. What I think is that as long as you know the style of wine that you like, then you can build up your knowledge and your experience about wine, and then you'll be a bit more adventurous. And I think this, you know, this is a wonderful world you know, to experience. Then the greatest challenge is you know, to combine it with some food. Being French, you know, I love having people in my house, and uh, setting up a cellar, you know, for me, has been obviously you know, one of the greatest fun. I think one of the really saddest things that could happen to wine is people spend money, good money, on wine and then don't store it in the right place or store it at the wrong temperature. Wine basically doesn't like extremes of temperature, it likes constant temperature and constant humidity. The real enemy of wine though, apart from temperature and it's related to temperature, is air. You don't want air getting into your bottle. But if you have a cork that leaks, then air is going to get into the wine and it will really damage it. And this is why we lay wine on its side, so that it keeps the, water, it keeps the cork wet all of the time and you're not going to have any problems at all. I suppose there are two reasons for laying wine down. The first reason is uh, you hope that the wine will improve over time and you know, you're actually hanging on to it and you're monitoring its progress. Uh, and the second reason really for laying wine down is investment. A friend of mine who lives in Canada, she was telling me a story about her father who's got a very good cellar, had this system of labelling the wine. So he labelled it in three different ways. One actually said, you can drink this. The second lot said, I prefer it if you didn't drink this. And the third one said, this is your inheritance. So I think it's quite important to know what it is you're drinking, um, and just to divide it into those, maybe those three areas, so you actually know what's where. You know, I think a mixture of prices, also a mixture of wine styles, primarily reds. I'd, I'd you know, probably got in my cellar 80% red and probably 20% whites. One white that I do like storing, and I think is a fantastic wine to age yourself, is champagne. There are lots of places you can store wine, but some of them more ideal than others. You know, put in something like a spiral cellar, you've got something where the temperature is constant and your wine does not like being messed about. I came across the spiral cellars via some of my uh, clients who have a spiral cellar and absolutely adore it. When I looked into it, it was you know, a real joy because not only they build it in five days, but um, you know, it's all natural, it's part of my house. A spiral cellar is a solid, concrete construction that sits inside a waterproof lining. As the cellar is set into the earth, it maintains a pretty consistent natural ground temperature of 8 to 15 degrees Celsius and is resilient to vibration. You don't hear any engine, you know, for the humidity and, and the temperature. It's all natural. It's absolutely amazing. Once it's dug, uh, it's in there, it has a natural ventilation system and um, it looks after itself. Two pipes that feed to the nearest external wall facilitate a passive ventilation system. This helps prevent the air in the cellar from becoming stale and maintains the correct humidity levels. The differential height of the vent pipes causes warm air to be sucked out through the bottom pipe and cool air comes in through the pipe at ceiling level, displacing the warm air. The pipes are either fed through the wall cavity or fed up the outside or inside of the wall, dependent upon the room usage. The wine is stored horizontally, inside separate curved bins that line the walls of the cellar. Each bin holds up to two cases of wine and allows the air to circulate through the holes in the modules. You can hold 1900 bottles. So, you know, a lot to drink, you know, in, in many years ahead. And that gave me the capacity to continue to expand my collection and my, my interest. My friends call it the, uh, let's go down to your James Bond cellar, Vincent. A spiral cellar can go pretty much anywhere in the ground floor of a property. It's up to you whether it's your kitchen, lounge, hallway, dining room, garage or study. Our engineer will always check that the location is suitable. The kitchen to me seems the natural place to have it, especially for in the type of kitchen we have. It's a big entertainment room. I chose to have my cellar in the garage because it proved to be the most practical, uh, easiest way to, to install it. It fits in this family room superbly. We have several trap door options to ensure that the cellar either blends in with the interior of your home or is made a focal point. The 
Um, cellar looks fantastic, especially at night when we're entertaining. It's a, it's a huge um, talking point. Once you've decided you'd like to know more about having a spiral cellar, we'll arrange for one of our surveyors to visit your home and assess the best location for the cellar. He'll carry out a full survey. Load-bearing walls, services and floor construction will impact upon the efficiency of the solution. He'll also take a note of your room dimensions and your preferences for the trap door and cellar depth. Then, if you decide to proceed, we pass this information on to our engineer, who prepares calculations to ensure that your preferred cellar location is suitable for the building structure. Planning permission is not normally required, but building regulations approval is. We can submit the application for you. We'll request the visit from the building control office during the installation, and then the completion certificate once the cellar is finished. The installation process takes from five to seven working days. We fully protect your home and access point into the property. The existing flooring is lifted by us or a specialist, and then we start digging a hole 2.2 meters in diameter. The dig will take us about three days. The base of the excavation has a disc of geotextile and is then covered with a layer of sand, then the first geotextile protection bag. Next, the waterproof butyl liner. The internal geotextile bag is finally installed. A reinforced base slab of concrete is poured and left overnight. Now the cellar begins to take shape. The precast modules with one step per layer are placed in position. Reinforced concrete is poured outside the butyl bag, creating a ring. This ensures that the cellar resists the surcharge load that may be exerted from the existing foundations of the property. The ventilation pipes are fitted. They feed to the nearest external wall. Rodent guards are fitted to ensure no unwanted visitors gain access to the cellar. Finally, the trap door of your choice is fitted. It needs to be left open for at least two weeks to allow the cellar to dry out fully. Within five to six weeks of the installation, once the cellar has completely dried out, we will fit any optional extras such as step coverings or a safe. We then sign it off and the cellar is ready for you to stock. Our fully installed cellars come with a five-year guarantee. It's just lovely to have um, enough room to put um, all of our wine, whether it's collectibles or whether it's everyday drinking. It's something that we can actually start to take an interest in and also start collecting different wines. Um, but I'm now able to have a selection of wines from different parts of the world, different grape varieties uh, that I can go to um, to match um, different types of food. You can keep everyday drinking wine in there at the right temperature. You, you don't, it's not just for the wine enthusiast. It's well, I visited South Africa and um, California uh, and arranged to have some bottles shipped back um, to, to put in the cellar, uh, which also provides memories of those trips. We wanted somewhere we could store a serious amount of bottles. The storage in a, a spiral cellar, we, we feel, is hands above anything else. And fit in with our kitchen. It's a natural system, um, it stores wine at a constant temperature. All the wine at your fingertips, at eye level, clearly labelled. It has no running costs associated with it at all. The whole build of it was simple. The installation process um, was extraordinary. They came in, they did it, yeah. dropped in. We didn't even know it had been done. It was very quickly done. Um, there was very little disruption to the rest of the house. They uh, protected the surrounding area extremely well so there was no surrounding dust. And uh, at the end of a week, I had a functioning cellar. It didn't require a lot of work from the builders. It was literally, as I said, just digging the hole and then the cellar people came in, put the cellar in, and that was it. I'm pretty confident that installing the cellar has added value to my home. I think what it does, it, it's another feature yeah. in a house that will add value. We did like the look of it from the moment we saw it um, in a magazine. It certainly created that wow factor 
Um, it certainly creates a lot of interest and a talking point when people come around. Well, we used to entertain quite a lot. Now we've got the, 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 the spiral cellar, we entertain even more. We can't wait to, to, just to show it off. It looks amazing. And yes, to have obviously a, you know, a cellar like spiral cellar has been you know, a dream come true for me.